just lie down, notice what has been the effect of this week so far. Did you manage to just cruise along safely during the last little bit of the lesson? Did you hit the crash barrier? What does come into your awareness now? Are there particular parts of you that stand out or parts of you that you notice seem to be resting differently on the floor? And then come up onto your hands and knees, please. Now, obviously, your feet are out behind you. Could you bring them together so that your right foot rests on the sole of your left foot and that they're more or less in the middle? And letting your head just hang and start to take your pelvis a little bit towards and away from your heels. And as you go back, could you have the idea that you're going to draw in your belly? Notice what effect that has <clears throat> on the organization through your trunk. Does it make it more or less easy for you to take your pelvis back if you do something with your abdomen? And then swap your feet over to something as small as which foot's on top make a difference to how you can take your pelvis back. And some of you might have noticed at various times that changing something, changing from one side to the other has a profound difference. Others of you might find things are fairly symmetrical sometimes. What's it like this time? Does it change the way that your hip joints move? Does it change the direction that your sit bones head in? We spoke yesterday about timing and orientation and manipulation. So what options can you find in this movement? Can you change the angle subtly to find out what difference that makes? Can you notice the effect of one foot or the other being on top on how you enact that movement? Okay, and then leave it, just rest again, please. It's interesting looking around the room at all the different shapes of resting. So which bit of you needed a break? Which bit of you is breathing a sigh of relief just to be able to do something different for the moment? And then when you come back, is there something that you could do slightly differently <coughs> that would make it <coughs> oh, excuse me, easier on that part? <coughs> 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 
<laughs> so come back to your hands and knees again. This time have your knees close together. <coughs> Begin with your right foot resting on the left foot. So knees are touching, going to take your pelvis backwards towards your heels. Thanks, Quinn. What's different? If you think about <clears throat> the shapes we saw in the hip joints, the shape of the cup, the shape of the round bit has bringing your knees together, giving you a different sensation about how your hip joints move. <clears throat> Swap your feet over. And then keeping your pelvis high above your feet, can you begin to take your pelvis a little bit left and right? <clears throat> How do you do that? Can you sense the changing shape through your torso? what happens in your legs and your feet. As Oren mentioned earlier that twisting joints doesn't do them any good. So in order for your knees to be safe, the whole leg needs to move. Can you feel how that happens? Notice what your head does. Does it have to do that? <clears throat> and then pause if your knees need a little respite, just change your position for a moment. And then coming back to your hands and knees. And this time, could you slide your right foot out to the right and back again? Sorry? Um, put your knees comfortably close together, not, not far apart. And just see what it's like to take your right foot out to the side. So you're pivoting around your knee, but you still got this idea that you're keeping the knee joint safe. So notice where does that movement need to occur? And what happens through the rest of your system to make that movement easy and light? Your knee's kind of the pivot point and your foot's going out to the right. And if you wanted to let your heel come closer to the floor, what would you do with your foot?
So knee stays on the floor. So maybe you could have the idea that as your foot moves away to the right, the toes point outwards. And as your foot comes back, the toes are pointing inwards. <clears throat> So how do you change the direction of your foot without wrecking your knee? What happens through your leg, into your hip, into the rest of you? Just pause, give your knees some respite if they need it. Come back onto your hands and knees. Just take your pelvis a little bit left and right. Notice if something's different after having done that movement with your foot. And then let your right foot start to swing out to the right again and see if something is now easier in terms of finding a way to take your heel to the floor. How does that have to happen all the way through your system? Lower leg turns. It's going to turn long bones in your leg, your pelvis needs to move, spine needs to move. You may find that your head goes in a particular direction. Let it go. Just take that idea of your foot being able to turn and lie flat sideways on the floor and have a rest. <clears throat> You could imagine your nervous tissue has changed. You've got an idea, an image. Your terribly in intelligent brain and nervous system are working away at adapting the musculature and the connective tissue. give your bones the best chance they can possibly have of enacting your in intention. OK, 
Okay, come back to your hands and knees. Let's see what your left leg knows. Can you begin to swing your left foot a little bit out to the side? <clears throat> Just starting gently, find out where the easy range is. You've probably had experience that you are a learning system and that if you experience success at something, then what's possible expands. To see if you can stay within the range of success of being able to swing that left foot gently out to the left, feeling that movement through all of you. So it's not just your foot moving, it's not just your leg, it's you changing your shape so that your foot goes to the left. And thinking of the idea that maybe your heel's going to head a little bit towards the ground. Are you still breathing? Are you staying within cruise? <clears throat> Does it help to really shift your weight over onto the right side so that that leg's free to turn? Your pelvis can do whatever it needs to to bring your left heel to the floor. We've made all sorts of weird shapes over the past few days. What shape do you need to become? Where does your weight need to be? To get that left heel towards the floor. <clears throat> Let it go, have a rest. And then come up in sitting. Your feet standing on the floor in front of you. Leaning on your hands behind. Lift your pelvis into the air. Actually, before you do that, maybe your feet need to be a little bit apart because you're going to drop your left knee in towards the floor. So lift your pelvis into the air let your left knee drop in towards the floor. Okay. Back and forth a few times, just noticing how do you do that? What does your pelvis need to do? <clears throat> your right leg stays standing. Can you feel where your pelvis needs to go? to let that knee come forward and down.
Okay, and see what it's like to let the right knee come to the floor. Is this one of the symmetrical moves or one that's totally different? Or is it a little bit different? What needs to happen in terms of how you move your pelvis? What happens through the rest of you in terms of changing shape to let that happen? And as your knee comes down, can you find a way of letting the buttock on the same side come towards the floor. So, so let's, let's back up a little bit. Let's go back to just your left knee coming towards the floor. As your left knee touches the floor, can you let your buttock lower so that you sit on your left sit bone? No. It's an idea. It's a direction. Have your buttock up in the air. <laughs> okay, now this is totally weird. Let it go. Just stop for a moment. For some people, lifting your pelvis into the air, dropping one knee down, lifting it up again, seems to be pretty easy. For others, the idea barely makes sense. Once you've dropped your knee onto the floor, can you do something with your shape that allows the weight of your pelvis to come down towards the floor on that side? Maybe, maybe it's just an idea, a seed to sow into your system to see what on earth it can make of it. Try it a little bit on the left side. Try it on the right side after a while. Maybe one side's easier than the other. So hang out there until you get a little bit of an insight or a clue. Both your pelvis is up in the air to start so that there's room for a knee to come towards the floor. What would have to happen? Does your buttock, sorry, does your pelvis need to come forward or backward to allow the knee to drop down. It's allowed to do whatever it wants to do. It's going to be easier. There's going to be more space in your hip joints if your pelvis is up in the air to let one knee come forward and drop towards the ground. You might find it helpful to let your pelvis come forward as well. And if it's time to rest, you can rest. If it's easy to do, is there something you could do to make it difficult? We're not going to let everybody get off scot-free. If we're, if we're here to, to learn how to learn and there's no learning opportunity, how could you create one? If this is something you already know how to do, can you figure out what you might do to inhibit that movement? Have a look around at what other people are doing. Are they doing something that you know how to do or that you don't know how to do? Can you see what makes it easier or less easy? Take a rest. Let it go. Okay. Maybe the people on the on my left might like to stand up for a moment and the people on my right might like to come back to that 
sitting with your feet standing position. Pick whichever knee was easier. Maybe. Is it the shoulders that are a problem or the, or the wrists? I mean, it may be that you could put your elbows on a chair to lift your pelvis into the air. Or maybe, maybe you just want to watch for a moment and see if you get a clue from what somebody else is doing. So would you guys, just for a moment, lift your pelvis into the air, drop one knee in, see how your knee approaches the ground. And if you wanted to let that buttock come down towards the ground, what do you do? Some people can do it easily, some people can't. Can you see any difference in the shape or in the trajectory? Just come back and forth a couple of times and please rest when you need to. Okay, people who've been moving, just rest. You might want to stand up and watch what the other half make of all that. Okay, lift your pelvis into the air. Let one knee drop down towards the other foot. Okay, can you then find a way to take that buttock a little closer to the ground? That's it for you, good. Okay, what's the difference? What's the difference in shape? What's the difference in trajectory? Where did the pelvis go? Or is there just an overall kind of sense of the movement that you could take a, a mental picture of, absorb it and digest it? that might give you a different sense of the, the movement. Okay. Back you go to your own mat. Can you remember seeing somebody do that movement easily? You mightn't have the details, but you might have just a general impression. So without thinking too much, can you bend your knees, stand your feet, lift your pelvis into the air? Just see if you can, can get a sense of following that internal image now. What would it feel like to be able to do what you saw?
Excellent. Let it go. Have a rest. One of the instructions that Feldenkrais gives in this next section is organize yourself so that your knee and your hip feel safe. So would you keep that in the foreground of whatever else you do? But it's not about achieving any amazing kind of thing that may or may not be useful to you in the future. It's about figuring out how to do something that's challenging, something that we don't know how to do yet. So come back up to sitting, rest on your hands behind. Lift your pelvis into the air a little bit, and drop your left knee towards the ground. Can you take your weight onto the left buttock or approach it? Okay, and then straighten your left leg out to the front. And begin to take your left foot around to the left in a big arc. <coughs> so how do you do that? Notice what your pelvis does. Where does it go to support you? How does it get out of the way of your leg? Can you feel it shifting left and right? And the next time your, your left foot is back, leave it there. And can you lift and lower the left side of your pelvis? Yes, you'll need to provide some support into your system. And can you have the idea that you can move your pelvis a little bit closer to your foot, a little bit further away from your foot? Can you actually lift it, put it closer, bring it back again?
and come back to the circling of your left foot. Is anything more available? Pelvis discovered something about rolling left and right. <clears throat> And pause, let things rest for a moment. Come back up to sitting, bring your left foot around behind near your pelvis. Have your right leg standing. Your weights on your right sit bone. Okay, and if you think of your right knee now wanting to go and say hello to your left knee, how could it possibly do that? And if you don't think about just your right knee going towards the left knee, but you changing your shape, to enable something to happen that your knees came closer together, what can you do? <laughs> Remembering that you're keeping your knee safe and your hip safe, Continuing to breathe, thinking about those questions about what could I do differently in terms of the timing of the different parts, the angle at which I head something in, other movements I'm doing that I don't need to do, or something that could join in that might help. Can you even envisage what it would be like for your two knees to be close in this shape? Sorry? Well, your left one is, <laughs> was, <laughs> let it go, leave it. If you catch yourself getting too much into thinking, you will probably find that you stop breathing, your ribs tighten up and things don't go as well as they might. Okay, come back to sitting. Have your hands behind to support. Lift your pelvis into the air and see what it's like to bring your right knee towards the floor now. Doing the other side now. Yep. Okay, so where your hands are is gonna make a difference. shape of your torso is going to make a difference. OK, 
Can you drop your right knee down and then find a way of sitting on your right sit bone or approaching it? Okay, and then straighten your right leg. Left leg will just stay standing and begin to swing your left, your right foot around in a big semicircle. Feel how you shift the weight, you change the shape through your trunk. You rest on one hand, the other hand comes away from the ground. And you do that with your left knee stand your left foot standing your left knee in the air okay and then you can park your right foot behind you and see what's it like to find a way to bring your left knee towards your right knee. You may need to lift your pelvis. You might need the help of your hands to do that. There's a big changing shape through your trunk. Your pelvis will move. Some of you will experience an amazing sense of achievement and satisfaction, and some of you will experience a whole array of other emotions. <laughs> Let it go, have a rest. Hmm? Yep, you're taking care of your knees, you're taking care of your hips, Your ego, yeah, take care of that as well. Now, Zoran and I were chatting earlier this morning about the average age of the people for whom those lessons were designed originally. <laughs> it was different from the average age in this room. You're doing really, really well. The average age then, probably young 30s. In fact, I really am impressed. You've stayed with this incredibly well. You've managed to sustain your equilibrium, <laughs> more or less. You've managed to stay in the room and stay involved. <laughs> this doesn't always happen in Feldenkrais training programs. Often there's a certain amount of weeping in the bathrooms. But, So as you lie there, can you consider how you might begin to take your left foot and leg in a large semicircle around to the left? So if you're, if you're on your front, please roll to your back. It will be easier or more relevant anyway. <clears throat> So this is the same movement that you were doing in sitting. 
you'll need to roll the leg so that you protect the knee and slide the foot around so that your knee bends and your left foot ends up somewhere near your left hip. You may need to change the shape of your torso. Your pelvis will need to move, your spine will change shape. Okay. How do you do it? Okay, so mostly you need to roll to the right. Let your foot come around and then can you roll back a little bit once your leg's there in place? If you think about the inside of your foot sliding around on the floor, let your knees soften and bend, pelvis rolls. In fact, you pretty much come right over onto your right side and your foot goes behind. Okay, many of you are getting the gist of that, that you can roll onto your side, leg bends, foot slides around behind. And then leave it behind you and gently explore the idea of rolling back towards your back. Where do you begin? Do you try taking your pelvis immediately? Do you start with your shoulders and your head? Does everything go together? Is there a sequence? Once you've got there, how on earth do you get back to your side again? If you've got it, can you find a way of not being able to do it? Can you learn something about how people might inhibit their capacity or something that might give you an insight into what you've managed to do inadvertently that you could then do deliberately? And then rest on your back. Let your legs come down long. And while that, that memory, that image is still in your awareness, could you imagine doing that to the other side? Could you imagine shifting your weight a little bit onto the left, your left leg, so your right leg starting to roll a little bit, and fold and sweep around. Your pelvis rolling to help carry that leg until it's behind you. And then you'd be lying on your left side, 
and gently begin to roll towards your back. So practice that in your imagination a few times. Practice it being easy. Being really fluid and elegant. Remember to include coming back onto your side fluidly and elegantly as well. And when you've got a little bit of a sense of how that might go, just begin gently, only as much as you can match the physical experience with your elegant imagination. And when you've experienced success at that, maybe you could try taking it a little bit further and see if you can expand your sense of success and ease. And maybe there's something you've discovered or learnt, the quality of the way you can move in this direction that you could take back to the other side. So just a couple of times alternate, swinging your right leg round to the right behind you and then rolling back into it. And then coming back and letting it out, taking the other leg around behind and resting into it. Really get a sense of the changing shape of your body. And then let it go. Let everything come down long again. <coughs> Notice what's changed. What feedback can you take from the floor now about your organization? When you're ready, roll yourself over, find your way up to standing. Notice how you connect with the floor in this orientation. 
and then see what it's like to walk. After all that moving of your feet and your leg and your pelvis, and your spine, what effect has that had? Oh. And you deserve a short break after all that. <laughs>